to ensure that I do not run out of iron. I want as much iron income as possible, and that looks like it. So, with that in mind, I might want to start upgrading my cities. That is a city already, right? This is not. Um, well, for starters, let's upgrade all of the villages. It's less expensive in terms of iron usage, and I believe I get more out of it. So, there we go. Iron has been used, problems have been solved, the day has been saved, and the turn has been ended. There we go. Poland is invading me. That's what I wanted to see. Uh, apparently we are also at war with Russia. That's not what I wanted to see. That is in fact the opposite of what I wanted to see. And Russia is... <laughs> oh, are you serious? Russia is trying to invade me. How cute. Right. Well, Russia is being invaded, although that's not going to end well. Um, right. So, turn-wise. Poland has nothing over there, so I'm going to want to move these guys over to... Oh, they used all of their moves. Dumb. Well, um, if I move... Let's see, if I move these guys down here, I'll have... Uh, no, no, I want to mass my troops over here. I can attack them the next turn. Oh, you are fucking kidding me, Russia. Right. Right. Well, Poland won't be... Hmm. Hmm. I'm gonna need to split these forces over to here. Like so. Well, that should do it. You guys have been reinforced. That looks like a force that can move Poland out of my way. Excellent. Now then, I need to deal with Russia. Right. Um, three of those. Yes, 16 and 3 should be able to do something nasty to these Russians. As for these Russians, uh, I don't want to buy artillery actually. I do want to buy artillery, but I was a fool to upgrade it to that level. Well, next turn I'll be able to do something to the Polish. Russia is going to be a pain to deal with. I believe I've already said that, but I'm going to say it again. Right, so, focus, action. You're going to need troops. There we go. Resources have been spent, and it's time to defend ourselves. Against, I believe this is against Russia. <coughs> so, let's do this. Let's make... Sort of that type of formation right there. We'll have double the infantry. That looks good. Russia doesn't seem to be all that upgraded. Excellent. Means this shouldn't be too, too terribly hard for me to win. Especially since I have a massive cavalry advantage. And they have a very weird formation allowing me to do maximum amounts of damage with my cavalry. How did you survive that? I'd like to know. There we go. Only 90 of those guys left. Uh, you can keep moving. Uh, that looks good for me. Yeah, that's a good plan. Move your troops to block your other troops. 
Okay, you guys start shooting, you move up to block, you kill the remainder of that, you kill the remainder of that. You're gonna attack him. <coughs> Did you attack? No you didn't, now you have. That's good enough. There we go. Right, okay. That, I do it, you do that. Um, 1500 Russian cavalry to a thousand Swedish highly upgraded cavalry. Yeah. That's what I thought. Right. The other Russian battle. The bigger Russian battle. Well, I do have an advantage in both infantry and cavalry. Unfortunately, they have artillery and I don't. And I don't know what kind of artillery they do have. But I guess I'm about to find out. Right, I want my cavalry out on the flanks and I want my infantry massing somewhere like that. Okay, they have very bad artillery. That is good. And I don't believe I've seen this battle view before. This battle map look. This actually makes it quite hard to see where everything is. The other maps have had very clear lines as to where you could not could not move your troops. This, not so much. Um, let's see if we can finish this battle. Ooh, I like that. How many are there? Oh, I have 2,000 infantry in each of those units. Excellent. How many did you kill? Not enough. You deserve a demotion. Uh, you can move up here. I don't believe they want to attack you. You can follow suit. You're gonna stay. You're gonna stay. Okay. You're gonna die. Hopefully you are too. Almost. Maybe. Yeah. <laughs> Almost. Definitely. Can you take the... No, you couldn't. Right. Well, you almost did. That's not even worth the trouble, but I'm gonna do it anyway. Those are at full force. I still have numerical advantage. I'm gonna advance on that. You're gonna kill that. You're gonna move up in this place. You're gonna move here. There we go. Yeah, they don't wanna attack me anymore. Let's see. That's easy enough. That's a full unit, but I have a full unit as well. Killing almost all of them. Which is not all that great, because almost killing all of them probably means that he's gonna shoot me with cannons again. No! Didn't! Excellent! And now we're fighting Poland. Let's see what the Polish army has to offer in terms of military unit upgrades and strengths. I am invading them, so knowing their strength would be a good idea. Yeah. I think I can handle this. Now then. I want these places to be not quite as strong as they are because I have my infantry there. My cavalry I trust completely. My infantry, however, not so much. I trust them to do one thing and one thing only. Cap cat to Wow, I am very bad at speaking today. I want and trust them to do that. Catch the enemy cannonballs. It's pretty much all they're good for anyway. They're cheap and effective in drawing cannon fire. That's all I need from them. The 
Poland hasn't upgraded their cannons either, and if this is all they've got with the small amount of uh, soldiers that I've been seeing on, out on the uh, map, this should be an easy war to win. <coughs> Russia, on the other hand, they have troop numbers. And I fully expect to see a lot of those troop numbers on the battlefield as they invade me. Anything else would be f rather foolish on my part. There we go, you're surrounded. And you're gonna get shot to the pieces. There's 402 of you left. There is none of you left. <laughs> right. More battle. Cavalry should be able to fill this entire first line, which is excellent. The infantry goes in the back. And obviously, since the inf infantry is f the farthest back, they are the ones that need to be shot by the cannons. I would argue that that is not the case, but since it's the AI who thinks that it is, I'm not going to. This looks very Russian, by the way. Though I'm fairly certain we are f currently fighting in Germany. Huh. Yes, yes, shoot my infantry. I don't think I'm even taking all that much damage from that. Though, to be honest, I didn't really check and see how many they were before this, but yeah, I've got about 900 in each left, that's good. As long as they are able to stay on the board and take more cannon hits, I'm okay with them taking damage and losing troop numbers. Right, more cannon. Let's do something about you, and do something about you, and do something about you. There we go. Now my cavalry should be able to sweep through this line quite easily. Oh yeah. Nope. Not those guys. But I think I did more damage to them than they did to me. So it's all good. Wow, you're actually attacking. Killing about 500 men each attack. I don't approve. You need to die for such offenses. Swedish lands are not nearly yours to take. Uh, Hakin Spegel. He's apparently some sort of priest person. Um, by the way, that can also be in Swedish be pronounced Spiegel and it means mirror so his name's mirror <laughs> just so you know <laughs> um, he's apparently the the oh what's it called uh, he's the uh, uh, part of Carl the Eleventh's posse or whatever um, well, basically, he, he is his preacher and superintendent at Gotland, uh, which apparently has been Danish for a long time. Uh, he works with trying to make the church more Swedish and remove the Danish influences from teaching. He becomes bishop in Skara and Linköping and he is appointed Archbishop in 1711, apparently three years before he died. He apparently is the author of many psalms. 
there are 56 psalms written by him in the uh, 1695 edition of the psalm book. 11 of them are still in use in the latest Swedish psalm book from 1986, the year I was born. Although I do believe they printed another one since then, although I can't be quite sure. He also made a Swedish dictionary. Interesting. Who is this guy? Wait, what? Uh, Klaus Fleming. Right, so Carl XI not being pleased with how his the nation was run during the guardianship government during his childhood appoints uh, Klaus Fleming with a with leading a commission to uh, to map out the uh, actions of the Guardian's government which results in uh, high fines for the previous Guardians <laughs> Oh, he's apparently the father of Swedish bureaucracy too. Uh, previously, the nation was run by uh, a single person with great personal power. Under uh, throughout the lifetime of this class person, this has changed, and they build up a system of uh, of paid. Uh, secretaries, government officials, notaries, and writers. The bureaucracy is born. Wait, what? Oh, right. Um, in 1680, there's a it's called a great reduction, where the king confiscates large parts of uh, the land previously held by the nobility, and this guy is the guy who uh, sort of had his hand in making that happen, which makes him very hated by the nobility. Uh, mm. Oh, all right. Um, he was one of the most powerful men in Sweden during this time. Uh, actually, the most powerful after the king, but his workload was apparently too much for him, and he died at the age of 36. Sad. He would give something that I didn't even understand how it would work with the game mechanic. He'd give like a hundred silver per turn. I don't really think I need it even, so but no. Oh, oh, the witch hunt. The Swedish witch hunt, I see. Right. Uh, during the 17th century, the people of Sweden believed in many supernatural beings like trolls and giants and elves, elves and fairies and other things like that. There was also believed that people had made a pact with the devil, and those would be the witches and warlocks. I'm fairly certain that most people are familiar with this. Uh, such evil people must of course be burned and their ashes spread to the wind. During the Middle Ages, witch burnings were uncommon, but in between 1668 and 1677, there is a mass hysteria 
where they make a, a sort of a magic commission type thing and they burn uh, roughly 300 women accused of being witches. The witnesses, often children with uh, quite vivid imaginations, tell awful stories of going to a place called Blåkulla, which is a hill somewhere around in Sweden, I don't know exactly where, I, or remember exactly where at this point, where there are orgies with the devil. Uh, most people think that this uh, witch hunt was something that the church did in this day, but that's actually not the case. But the people's own superstitions were behind this witch hunt, so it had nothing to do with the church, at least not in Sweden. I can't speak for any other country, but in Sweden the church did not instigate the witch hunt. Uh, many priests tried to stop it. Alright. Uh, there was one person in particular, a priest I would imagine, known as Urban Jarne, who was known to be one of the most active in trying to quell this hysteria and witch burning. Uh, the last witch to be burned at the stake in Sweden was burned in 1704 and because of all this the game's punishing me by giving me a reduction in incomes by 200 silvers. Oh boo hoo hoo. Axiom. <laughs> boo hoo. Russia I love you. Russia you you just let me conquer that and we'll be best friends forever, okay? Because I wanted to buy that and someone screwed me over on it. So just let me conquer that and then we'll be best friends forever. I'll leave you Finland. All of it. Just give me that. And we'll be good. Okay? Okay. Uh, lots of stuff happening. I did that stuff. Renown points. Yeah, whatever. Uh, diplomacy. This is what happened. We've pretty much lost. We lost that and that to Russia. Other than that, I don't believe there's anything else. Right. Right, 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 right. I don't think there's anything I can do right now, considering I don't really have any iron at the moment. So I'm gonna have to just pass the turn along, go to the uh, tactical map, and probably get myself a whole ton more troops, because I have a feeling that with Russia at my doorstep, I'm gonna have to defend a lot of territories. But let's see what happens. Russia decided that they'd conquered enough and are no longer at war with us. God damn it! <sighs> you couldn't even let me capture that one freaking Jesus. The game just doesn't want me to have that. It's as simple as that. Are you... Oh my god. What are you doing? You're attacking with a hundred infantry against that? I mean, I know it's not a big army, but you don't stand a chance. Neither do you. Well, maybe if you've upgraded enough, you might stand a chance, actually, but Jesus. Now this is an army. That's what you use to invade something. Um, these places look good. I don't think I need to do anything in particular over there. Um, these guys, do I invade? I invade here. Excellent. Now you guys, could you take that? You could. Excellent. That means you're going in there. 
And as for these guys, yeah, they can take that. I, yeah, you're not gonna take that. There's no way, bro. No way. I'm gonna take it. There we go. Uh, combat. I didn't even need to recruit anything. Fancy that, I could save my money. And I have no idea where I'm fighting right now. But I think this is one of my offensive skirmishes, considering the low amount of cavalry I have. Yeah, sounds about right. I'm attacking somewhere in Poland. And I have 17,528 men against their 2,247. I know historically battles like that have been won by the underdog. I don't think this game has the mechanics to allow for that though. I just don't. <laughs> it's not gonna happen, Poland. You're losing something today. Well, I guess if Rush since Russia wanted to be at peace with us, it's kind of good considering that gives me more time to crush Poland. <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me. And once I'm done with that, I might be able to focus a bit more on Russia. Come on. There we go. Russia is going to be a pain in the ass, though. I can just tell. They have so many troops. So many. Right. We are... Defending somewhere, I would say. Let's see, one flank is going to be a little bit exposed, so I'm going to give more troops there. And they've upgraded their cannons. Guess they saw the power of my cannons and wanted a bit of it. Right, it's not going to help you all that much. Especially not since you're most likely going to aim it at my infantry. And I double. Thanks, game. Doesn't really matter because I would have skipped the turn anyway, so... Doesn't really matter at all. Right, people, move it. You need to catch up to the cavalry. We actually simulated the speed of the cavalry by them being faster than the infantry. Holy shit! <laughs> Misclick made it possible. Now we are going to shoot them relentlessly, like that. How many did we kill? Enough. That's definitely enough. How many do you... Oh, okay. We're kind of equal on the troop count, apparently. The infantry, though, they're pushovers. Did I shoot at them? Yeah, I did. Good. I would have been... What? I didn't even double click game. Honest, I didn't. Maybe I did. I don't know. I'm pretty sure I didn't though. Right. More fighting. In Russia lookalike country place. Okay. You go over here. <coughs> Damn, I'm... My throat's really not up to par <coughs> for this video. Do apologize for that. You didn't even do any damage. Like, holy crap. What the hell? Are you seriously telling me that you can't... There you go. That's what you're supposed to do. Seven hundred men with each shot. Why game? Why did you make me waste my artillery? Ow. That hurt and it's all your fault game. I could have hurt them equally. Yes, equally because I have better artillery. 
<laughs> no. My artillery decided to aim at something else. Great. Now I'm at a disadvantage troop numbers wise. Can we do anything about that? Can you be useful? That didn't look useful. No. No. You did not do anything useful right there. What about that? That looked more useful. That's useful. Good. Keep being useful. There we go. At least I can count my cavalry to be useful. Sort of. Well, useful enough. At least the troop count is starting to look good again. Guess that's always good. Not a lot of movement from the computer there. I should have moved you up last turn. I'm such a derp. Alright, people. Slaughter them. Ow. 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 I wasn't talking to you, artillery. I was talking to my cavalry. God damn it. That hurt. So I'm gonna make sure this hurts them, too. Are you shitting me? There we go. 441 men. Ow! Oh, there's only 25 of them. I should have checked that. Oh well. I win. They lose. Next battle. More cavalry ton of infantry, basic setup, shoot cavalry in the face, 700 and you couldn't kill them? Are you serious? Yeah, they're serious, it's 700 and we can't kill them. They are on horses, sir, it's like we can't shoot at that. The horses are so cute, it's ponies. Oh god. Well, I have 18,000 troops deployed here. That's kind of overkill, considering what I'm defending against. Or maybe I'm attacking. That could be it. This could be my other attack force. Very possible. In fact, I'm almost sure of it now that I think about it. I don't think I left that much of a defensive force anymore. Are you seriously not being... Uh, how about... No. No, 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 no. Some shots can kill a million soldiers, and some shots can't even hit a freaking... Oh. Uh, some shots can't even hit the barn door of the green giant. <laughs> That's bad. See, the cavalry, they're consistent. They're always killing big numbers. Mm. I wish all of my units were that consistent. Especially the infantry. The infantry, however, is not to be relied upon. And I think I've said this on numerous occasions. But I'm going to say it again, because it's a valid point, and I... 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 I'm just stuck on it. It's a deal. The infantry are not to be relied upon to kill big numbers. Right. Move along. Move along. There. I should be able to kill them, hopefully, by the uh, end of my turn. Although, knowing the infantry, it probably won't be. Nope. At least one survived. Because he was attacked by infantry. Yeah. Oh god, you didn't even do much. 
much damage. Man, you suck. And you move into death. Thank you. Have a nice day. And here we go. Urban Yarna. But where Oh, he would give renown points every every turn. One or one through five renown points every turn. One. Don't care another one. <coughs> universal geniuses, really? <laughs> That's a thing. He was a universal genius. <laughs> Someone in the comment section, please tell me what a universal genius is. <laughs> I would love to know. <laughs> oh, he works within medicine. Medicine? Medith did, I, did I just get a lisp? He works. He works in medicine. Really, Axion? What the hell? Okay, I need to stop after this. I can't keep recording when I can't even speak properly. He worked within medicine again. <laughs> Jesus, come on! It's a simple word. He worked with with medicine. There. God damn! I don't even know why I had trouble saying that. Apothecary, and that's supposed to sound like that. Mining. Ew. Educating nannies. Sobriety <laughs> and law. <laughs> right. So, unless someone says something else in the comment section, those are the fields within which you need to be learned in order to be a universal genius. <sighs> uh, he had a doctorate with. No, oh, not again. In medicine. Uh, he's one of Sweden's most prominent medicinal authorities and is made Carl XI's personal doctor. Uh, he's interested in the health effects of water from wells and Founded the Medivi Well, which is a popular health resort for the Swedish upper class. <laughs> right. Um, apparently, that's a place where members of the Swedish uh, royal family go to drink the well and enjoy themselves. Yeah, I know what well they're tapping. It's called a keg nowadays. <coughs> if you're sick, you are uh, you are given a place in the hospital with 200 places, which uh, Jarne built nearby. He is a strong he is a strong opposition to the 60 the witch burnings of the 1670s. And uh, yeah, he was one of the one of the few who actually noted that it was mass hysteria and nothing else. And he uh, and he wrote a paper which uh, actually uh, contributed in ending the uh, witch burnings. Interesting guy, this. Carl Magnus Stewart. British man, eh? There's no shadow of the Oh, this is a guy who lets us build stuff without having the prerequisite stuff. Namely castles without a town and uh, no castles without an exercise field and barracks into fortresses without a town. Uh, oh, Scottish even. Stuart was from Scotland. His grandfather was born there and uh, in the service of Eric the Fourteenth. 
Carl Magnus makes a military career as the aide of Erik Dahlberg uh, within the fortification. Uh, together they build, among other things, called Kru Jesus, Karlskrona, the Karlskrona fortification system. Uh, when Darberg becomes older, Stuart takes over mo most of the uh, fortification work. Stuart is a teacher in military theory to the young Karl XII. He ends up being the governor of Kurland and uh, chief of fortification. Very uh, fortified guy, this. Right, so I have won those three places. Uh, the Stuvida family has won that place as well as another one. Where? Where? Oh, uh, they won a defensive battle. Right. I conquered three places. The Stuvida family has conquered one additional. So it's me and the Stuvida family who actually have more than one province at the moment. The other families are kind of screwed. Personality-wise, these guys have appeared. Trade-wise, lots of stuff that has nothing to do with me. The Studio family has done that stuff. Renown-wise, I'm gaining the most because I'm the most competent when it comes to going to battle. Not sending a hundred troops or something. That's just insane. Right. So, before I end this session, let's have a look at this. Did I get anything with iron? I did not. Could use some iron. That That's not a jo joke game. I could actually really freaking use some iron. I wonder if I can just destroy this and still have my upgrades. Someone tell me in the comment section because I have upgraded everything. If I can destroy this now and be done with it and nothing bad happens from that, then then I would very much like to do so and start getting more iron out of this place. That would be a very good thing. I could make this into a fortress and possibly remove this fortress as well because I believe that it stands on a... Uh, uh, one of those things as well and since I have an exercise field over here hmm okay so I need a barrack down here in order to be able to purchase artillery that could actually be a good thing or maybe not I don't know whatever um, yeah that's tempting Tempting, tempting, tempting. One, two, three. Yeah, yeah, I could support that. I could, I could support that. Okay. Okay. Let's do that. We'll do that. We'll destroy that. And that wasn't even I right. Derp. Well, screw it. More capacity for military. Go. Maybe one of these were. I seriously don't remember what's in these anymore. There, there's no real indicator as to what's underneath the buildings, which is kind of sad. Not that I can see. I'm probably just missing it somewhere. I am, however, going to want an exercise field over here to be able to reinforce myself. And next time on Let's Play Sverike 2 with me, Axion. We will continue our advance into Poland, which has so far gone really well, and once that's done, I have a date with Destiny, and Destiny, thy name is Russia. I've been Action of the North, you've been watching Let's Play Sverige 2, and I'll see you next time.